Hello, I'm Paul Smith, the chair of the Evolutionary Psychiatry Special Interest Group, or EPSIG, and I'm going to quickly run through the achievements of EPSIG and the basic principles behind evolutionary psychiatry for you. EPSIG was formed in 2016 and aims to raise awareness of the value of understanding the contribution of evolutionary theory to psychiatry and medicine generally. Our starting point is the fact that humans are evolved organisms with a deep evolutionary history. This has a profound effect on our understanding of function and dysfunction, health and disease, including mental health. We maintain that ignoring this reality leads to incomplete or incorrect models of disease or disorder. EPSIG provides a forum for psychiatrists and others to discuss evolutionary models, research ideas and data with fellow evolutionists and others. We also facilitate networking with academic institutions and evolutionary scientists in a variety of disciplines, including biologists, psychotherapists, psychologists, as well as anthropologists, philosophers and neuroscientists. We keep members and supporters of the SIG informed via our web pages and newsletters. We posted 23 newsletters to members since 2016. We've also organized four workshops, three international symposia, and a couple of webinars on evolutionary psychiatry and related subjects. We have a YouTube channel with recordings of many of these events, which has attracted hundreds of thousands of views. We've also published two editorials in the Bulletin in 2016 and BJ Psych in 2019, and EPSIG members and supporters have also published many evolutionary peer-reviewed articles. So what is evolutionary psychiatry? Well, it's part of the wider evolutionary medicine movement and arose in its present form in the 1990s with publications by Randolph Nessie, John Price, Michael Maguire, and Alfonso Troisi, as well as others, although its roots go back much further, as far back as Darwin himself. Importantly, though, it's not to be confused with eugenics nor social Darwinism. It's a scientific approach trying to understand vulnerability to mental disorders in a deeper way. We're also not genetic determinists. Taking an evolutionary perspective is tantamount to turning genetics on its head. So, whereas non-evolutionary views may consider specific DNA sequences as the primary biological cause of any given trait, an evolutionary approach seeks to understand the selection pressures over evolutionary history that's led to the retention of these genes. So evolutionary views consider environmental influences at two distinct levels. First, over evolutionary history leading to the shaping of adaptations. And second, the ontogenetic effects of the environment during the individual's lifetime. Modern biomedical research and practice have focused on the molecular and physiological mechanisms underlying health and disease, while the evolutionary medicine and psychiatry focus on questions of why evolution has shaped these mechanisms in ways that leave us so susceptible to disease. Utilising work from evolutionary biology, we asked Tim Bergen's four questions of not only the mechanism and development of any trait, but also about the system's original evolutionary function and its phylogenetic history. There are many evolutionary reasons that are identified as causing mental disorder at this ultimate level. Evolutionary psychiatry generally, like evolutionary theory itself, is integrative and complementary with other approaches, fundamentally looking to understand mental disorder at a deeper and broader level. And so it integrates findings from psychiatric epidemiology, genetics, biochemistry and psychology, using insights from comparative animal evolution, ethology, paleoanthropology, while not being ignorant or dismissive of culture, philosophy and other humanities. Our driving principle is that evolutionary theory has made such a huge difference to understanding biological form and function that it will be able to help us understand the many forms of psychiatric disorder too. So what do we hope to achieve over the next few years? After a dormant year in 2020 due to COVID, we're hoping to resume our normal activity of holding at least two conferences or meetings a year. We're also looking forward to the publication of a major edited volume on evolutionary psychiatry to be published jointly by CUP and the college, and that should appear in 2022 with contributions from most of the leaders in the field worldwide. We also advocate for the inclusion of evolutionary principles in undergraduate and postgraduate training, as well as the MRC psych syllabus. For those interested, please visit the Royal College Site Special Interest Group, EPSIG, or 
look for our pages on epsig.org. Thank you very much.